Many people who embark on a new, healthier, and more active lifestyle find themselves drowning in advice from a fitness industry that is filled with complicated, confusing, and often contradicting knowledge. So let's hear what Andrew Huberman has to say about how the fitness business confuses us and tips to help you navigate the waters as you begin on your new fitness journey. Muscle isolation is not a natural phenomenon. If ever there was an area of practical science that was very confused, very controversial, and almost combative at times, it would be this issue of how best to train. I suppose the only thing that's um, even more barbed wire of a conversation than that is how best to eat for health. Those seem to be the the uh, two most common areas of, of online battle. And the scientific literature has a lot to say about both of those things. There are a lot of reasons to want to get stronger. And I should just mention that... It's not always the case that getting stronger involves muscles getting bigger. There are ways for muscles to get stronger without getting bigger. Everything about muscle hypertrophy, about stimulating muscle growth, is about generating isolated contractions, about challenging specific muscles in a very unnatural way. If you, whereas with strength, it's about using musculature as a system, moving weights, moving resistance, moving the body. However, increasing the size of a muscle almost inevitably increases the strength of that muscle, at least to some degree. Reasons why most everyone should want to get their muscles stronger is that muscles are generally getting progressively weaker across the lifespan, which is if you want to get stronger, it's really about moving progressively greater loads or increasing the amount of weight that you move. Whereas if you're specifically interested in generating hypertrophy, it's all about trying to generate those really hard, almost painful, localized contractions of muscle. The specific goal of hypertrophy is to isolate specific nerve to muscle pathways so that you stimulate the chemical and signaling transduction events in muscles so that those muscles respond by getting larger. Now, of course, how much weight you use in order to generate those contractions will also impact hypertrophy. But I think most people don't really understand the mind-muscle connection. It sounds like a great thing, but it's actually one of the things you want to avoid if your goal is simply to become more supple or to become stronger. You want to do the movements properly and safely, of course, but it's the opposite of hypertrophy, where with hypertrophy, you're really trying to make that particular muscle, sometimes two muscles, do the majority, if not all the work, whereas in moving force loads in trying to generate activity of any kind, like lifting a bar or doing a chin up or something, those so-called compound movements that involve a lot of muscle groups, if, if your goal is to be better at those, you want to avoid isolating in any one particular muscle. So when I say getting stronger, it's not necessarily about being able to move increasing amounts of weight in the gym. Although, if that's your goal, what I'm about to discuss will be relevant to that. But rather to offset some of the normal decline in strength and posture and the ability to generate a large range of movement safely that occurs as we age. We just tend to lose function in this neuromuscular system as we get older. And doing things to offset that has been shown again and again to be beneficial for the neuromuscular system, for protection of injury for enhancing the strength of bones and bone density. So there are a lot of reasons to use resistance exercise that, that extend far beyond just the desire to increase muscle size. So there's a critical distinction in terms of getting stronger versus trying to get muscles to be larger hypertrophy per se. And it has to do with how much you isolate those muscles. You know, the, the message tells people or motivates people through self-hate. So I'm going to the gym because I hate the way I look. I'm eating this particular way because I hate my body. We all experienced that. We all did things to ourselves and ate particular ways that weren't the best for ourselves because we didn't like the way we looked or we were insecure about our athletic performance or whatever. And it can be quite motivating for a short period of time. But think of the decisions that you tend to make when you're hating yourself. Uh, they tend to be self-destructive, over, especially over a long period of time. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to flip the message. We're trying to say to people, look, uh, don't exercise because you hate yourself and don't eat because you hate yourself. Do those things because you love yourself and you want to take care of yourself. And you think about that. Think about that for a second. If, if you treated yourself like somebody you cared about, what kind of decisions would you make when you went to the gym? What kind of foods would you eat? It, it results in a much more consistent 
uh, effective approach, but it's not sexy and it doesn't get you to buy you know, $100 worth of supplements like I did many times as a teenager growing up wanting to gain 10, 15 pounds of muscle. I'd buy all these products because they promised me so many you know, things that just never came true. Go to failure or beyond in order to stimulate growth. Why does it work at such a great range of repetitions? Well, there apparently are three ways that you stimulate hypertrophy and maybe more. One is tissue micro damage to the tissue. The other is through some sort of tension based changes in the molecular gene programs of cells that lead to protein synthesis that don't, that are distinct from damage. And the other are metabolic effects of like high repetition work of superfusion of the muscle with blood. We know that third category exists because people are now doing this blood restriction training where they cuff off a muscle and they'll use a really light weight. I've done these before. You can use a five pound weight and do curls with this and you're, you are in pain and the muscles are swelling up with blood. It does lead to hypertrophy, but in general, you're not sore. You're not doing tissue damage. And by the way, don't just turn the kid off a muscle because you have to use the proper cuffs um, because you need the blood still to flow in one direction. You can't just cinch it off or you'll, you'll potentially kill yourself if you um, get a clot. Or It's important for metabolism. The more muscle you have, and not just muscle size, but the quality of muscle, that's a real thing, the higher your metabolism is, and indeed the healthier you are. And so the way this process works has been badly misunderstood in the kind of online literature of weight training and bodybuilding and even in sports physiology. The Henneman size principle is kind of a, a, a foundational principle within muscle physiology. But many people have come to interpret it by saying that the way to recruit high threshold motor units, the ones that are hard to get to, is to just use heavy weights. And that's actually not the case. That weights in a very large range of sort of a percentage of your maximum, anywhere from 30 to 80%. So weights that are not very light, but are moderately light, too heavy, can cause changes in the connections between nerve and muscle that lead to muscle strength and muscle hypertrophy. The Henneman size principle essentially says that we recruit what are called motor units. Motor units are just the connections between nerve and muscle from a in a pattern that staircases from low threshold to high threshold. What this means is when you pick up something that is light, you're going to use the minimum amount of nerve to muscle energy in order to move that thing. Likewise, when you pick up an object that's heavy, you're going to use the minimum amount of nerve to muscle connectivity and energy in order to move that object. As our posture changes, our aesthetic changes. As our Posture and aesthetic changes, how we move changes, and as we improve muscle quality, whether or not that's increasing muscle size or not, that changes the way that our entire system, not just our nervous system and our muscular system, but our immune system and the other organs of the body work. So it's basically a conservation of energy principle. Now, if you continue to exert effort of movement, what will happen is you will tend to recruit more and more motor units with time. And that process of recruiting more neurons, more lower motor neurons, as if you recall from the beginning of the episode, these lower motor neurons are in our spinal cord and they actually dump uh, a chemical, acetylcholine on muscle, cause the muscles to contract. As you recruit more and more of these motor units, these connections between these lower motor neurons and muscle, that's when you start to get changes in the muscle. That's when you open the gate for the potential for the muscles to get stronger and to get larger, if that's what your goal is. Really had well, it on. sucks as an answer. Everybody wants to hear what the, <laughs> Yeah, the, and it's not it sexy. Does. Like, everybody wants <laughs> to hear, just give, I want to hear the pill, or yeah, tell me right. this, what, you know, can, what that, can I take, or what thing can I follow? Up. But the truth is, those are the big rocks. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a, a massive lack of awareness surrounding uh, nutrition. And, and it's, it's for, for a few different reasons. Uh, one is, it's, we can't trust our bodies natural systems of, of signaling anymore. So for example, the signal of satiety. The truth is there is no magic supplement or ab routine that can give you that beach body in a matter of days. But don't let that demoralize you. Your hard work is paying off. It just might take a little longer to see results. And when the results do show themselves, the feeling will be all the sweeter. Heavy weights can help build muscle and strength, but they are not required. 
What one has to do is adhere to a certain number of parameters, just a couple of key variables that I'll spell out for you. And if you do that, you can greatly increase muscle hypertrophy, muscle size, and or muscle strength if that's what you want to do. And you don't necessarily have to use heavy weights in order to do that. The people that like to move heavy weights around will say, no, if you want to get strong, you absolutely have to lift heavy weights. And that might be true if you want to get very strong. But for most people who are interested in supporting their muscular such that they offset any age-related decline in strength or in increasing hypertrophy and, and strength to some degree, there really isn't a need to lie about the Henneman size principle, which many people out there are doing, and claiming that you absolutely need to use the heaviest weights possible in order to build strength and muscle. Good luck on your fitness journey. Don't forget that the journey is yours, no one else's. And what you read in magazines or see on the TV may not be as real or indeed healthy as it might seem.